Hello, my fellow movie fans, and welcome to another episode of A Feast of Films Theater with your hosts, Matthew Alu and Ethan R. Hill. How's that? That was good. Oh, yeah. Classic. Classic. What's going on, my fellow movie fans? Welcome to A Feast of Films. This is episode 30. I am Matthew Alu, and with me, as always, is Ethan R. Hill. What's going on, buddy? Oh, you know, it's just, it's been a long road and we're here. And we are here and, uh, someplace. We don't exactly know where, but we are here. It is episode 30, um, which, you know, I kind of previously already said, but it's also another special occasion. It's one year of recording a Feast of Films. Oh my goodness, It's man. One, year one year anniversary. of a Feast of Films. Happy anniversary, buddy. We made it. I didn't buy you chocolates. My bad. You jerk. Yeah, I apologize. That's the one thing I asked for. Well, you are a little far away. I could email them to you, but... I know. I, I take email chocolates. I don't know if that works exactly. They might not taste that good. I don't know. I think they would taste fine. I just, like They taste probably kind of digital, but like... Obviously not as good as real chocolates, but... <laughs> it's those fiber optics, man. Get your fiber. Get your fiber. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get your fiber, fiber going, man. High fiber chocolates. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, no, one year. It's it, it's crazy. It's gone by, like, really quick. And today, we're actually talking about Star Wars Episode Six, which, to be honest, like, I don't, th- I, just... I don't think either of us thought when we started last year, Um, you know, despite, despite how many listeners or viewers we had, that we'd actually record for a year, like, consistently every week. Or every other week, sit down and record an episode together. And, you know, we started with episode one, a couple episodes after our first one. And here we are, episode six. There's kind of like a finality to it, even though we're going to keep going. But it's just like, it's kind of poetic. It's a nice way. It's a nice way to mark that. Yeah. Like, and the fact that it's also episode 30, like, it's just a nice clean number. It's not like 32 or 37. It's just episode 30. And we're talking about Star Wars episode six like and it's one year like it's just it's a beautiful trifecta of everything coming together in one episode so i'm pretty excited about it it's pretty cool i liked how that worked out not intentional at all but it was super cool well considering we changed our format from like a single episode being once per week to like breaking them into two parts yeah exactly right so that's where i am even then i'm kind of curious to go back and see how much we've actually recorded but like that's uh that's a lot of work right now. Yeah, no doubt. I don't want to count things. That's 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 not my job. No doubt, no doubt. But no, it's just uh yeah, it's been it's fun. It's been a good journey and I'm looking forward to another year of recording this ridiculous podcast and uh whether you're listening or not, you know, we're here having a great time, so just come on by and join us anytime cuz it's all about what's talking kind of- about the movies over here. It's also kind of interesting that like, like last week, the just before the year mark, we introduced having a third person. We fi- we finally introduced having guests and other voices in the mix too, which is kind of like I didn't even realize that that was coming up. Yeah, that we we're coming so to that, that one kinda, year mark. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of interesting. It's, it shows growth within a year. It shows that we've actually <laughs> changed a little bit. It shows a little development. Well, man, our, I'm pretty sure our episodes change like all the time. Like our structure changes all the time. But, uh, you know, but that, but that's the process of evolution. And especially when you're talking into your first year, like it's just a growth period, right? To try things out, to see what works, to see what doesn't work, to change it, to adjust it, to have a great time and just, you know, be creative with it and see what comes out of it. Cause at the end of the day, like we don't have a right to the results of our work, but the labor itself is the joy, you know, but the work itself is its own reward. Um, so I just, uh, that's what it feels like for this podcast, man. Like we, we, we came in here and it wasn't like, we're going to make this like the biggest thing freaking ever, man. Everyone is going to be listening to a feast of films. What's up? But we came in here because we love movies and we just want to talk about the things we love together. And damn, man, we've done it for a year. And that's, that's awesome. Honestly, if I could also send you chocolates and some real flowers, I would. But I have to save also, them for Mother's same Day, year. to be honest. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's coming up. Uh, Matt, it's also the same year that we both turned 30. So that's another... Nice. Yep. That's uh, nice. another thing. Yeah, so. that is. That is. 
It's <sighs> terrible. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's it for Feast of Films, guy. Like, it's quitting time quitting, now. man. That's it. This is the last episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll talk to you guys next time. Except we won't. Bye-bye. Just kidding. Don't leave. Just don't be leave. Oh talking God, to himself. Don't leave. <laughs> don't leave. Every episode from now on is just Prosser just <laughs> sadly being like, I, I wanted them to keep going, but they just, they just well, they stopped. They just stopped. They why, stopped. Why couldn't they keep recording? <laughs> anyway, today we're going to talk about Star Wars. And any day you get to talk about specifically, Star Wars is a good day. And specifically the best Star Wars. Yep. We both agree on that one. Like out of all out of all the episodes, the nine nine, right? Yeah, nine. Yeah, nine, nine and the, the two spin off spin-offs. Films. Episode six is just my it's the favorite. Greatest. It's the best one. I mean, there is some debate between Empire Strikes Back and, and their valid debates, but between anything Empire... else, it's not quite that close. Empire is the better made movie. I'll, I'll I'll fully admit Empire is a better made movie from beginning to end, but there's just something about Return that's just so much better. That just to me, like from a technical aspect, I can sit back and I can look at Empire and go like, okay, the acting's better, the direction's better, the story is a bit better, but Return just it's a great conclusion, and honestly, Empire would yeah. not be as good of a movie without that conclusion if it wasn't for that conclusion yeah. and that's kind of like and that's also why i really like 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 empire on its own if you took if you just removed knowledge of both like a new hope and return it would be a good movie it would be like okay yeah like this is a fun movie it's a well-made movie but you'd be confused you wouldn't know who anybody was from before <laughs> and yeah. if they if that's how the movie end if that's how the whole series ended everyone would be super confused and really mad yeah they would not whereas, like that like, there was no finality there whereas like return just has a really good like like whether you've seen um a new hope and empire they do kind of a really good job of reestablishing characters and definitely i mean like with star wars you have that you have that really nice um setup with the crawl the crawl is always gonna be what helps star wars out well not if disney has their way like and that's the thing like that's one of the things i think like i hate that disney's taking the crawl out of like everything else they're like it's only for the episodic movies and then rending them at nine whether they make more is who knows? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. But like, th that's the one thing that really bugs me about the spinoff films. Rogue One and Han Solo oh, yeah. is like, it doesn't feel they like you're watching a, a Star Wars movie, man. Like, why would you take that out? That's like the anthem before a sports game. Like, that's the thing. Oh, it yeah. gets everyone freaking hyped, man. Like, that's what gets us pumped to go well, watch you can totally Star have the Wars and give us a little background on everything going on. But honestly, let's be clear and let's be real honest with each other. It's not about the information that's on the crawl that's that important. It's sitting in that dark theater. It's the music. Seeing a long time ago in a galaxy far away and then... You know what I mean? And going into the well, theme, like And like watching that in a theater is like a beautiful experience, man. Like that's my favorite part of every damn Star Wars movie. When I'm watching it in the theater is that opening crawl. And the fact that they're taken away just pisses me off, man. Like that... That's like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Well, like, why would you take away the thing now, that is so specifically and exclusively Star Wars to its brand and say, we're not going to use it anymore because we don't want to. Another poor Star Wars Disney choice that I don't like. Well, I mean, at, at this point, though, like, as an as an adult who's seen as an adult who's seen all six movies multiple times. Do you even read the crawl most of the time, no, or do you just sit just, there and listen I, I, to the I music? I just sit as there, listen just... to music, enjoy the moment. Like yeah. I just love the moment, and honestly, like seriously, like I just I love the theater going experience to watching a new Star Wars film. Like I remember when I got to see the first one in theaters because before Episode One, like obviously we were not alive to go see the other Star Wars when they came out in the seventies um, and eighties, you know. We were technically alive because yeah. they got re-released in 97. Okay, well, I didn't go see them but in we, 97. I, didn't get, yeah, I don't think I... I have questions for my parents then, like, because I definitely had seen... Me? Well, because I had seen Star Wars when I was five. Yeah. So I saw them before they came out in theaters. 
So why didn't my parents? I got. I'm gonna call home. This and is ask a question this you need to be asking. Gotta, yeah, absolutely, man. I have to find out because this is this is actual important research. It is. I can see them maybe thinking I'm too young for it, but like it's just weird because like I watched other movies in theaters before that, hmm. so I'm curious about that. Or maybe it just didn't come to Saskatoon. That's very possible that too. Because it was, I imagine um, it was a pretty limited run, eh? I mean, I don't probably, know about it because it was mainly a. It was mainly to hype up episode, episode one because that's yeah. around the time that they like they announced they were making episode yeah. one, and and then yeah, episode one for me I got to go and see in theaters too. Like, like that's a, that's always yeah, my favorite title movement, thing. Man. Like that's that's always my favorite. Do moment. you think it's always like I just love how dark it gets in the theater? Then all of a sudden it's freaking Star Wars across the whole wall. Like it's so amazing. Like I just that's on it like yeah hands down and there's no gives reason me chills there's... and and there's no reason to cut it out like there's no good legitimate logistic reason to get rid of it none that's there's no reason at all because you can literally have star wars and then just the name of the movie you don't need to have an episode number you can just be like star wars rogue one that's all you need and then you can have the information exactly. you could have star wars well, um solo and, star, star, and the crawls were never exclusive solo star to wars story. the movies beforehand right like there were some in books they were in comics they were in video games they were freaking everywhere there was star wars because that was star wars thing like that was the brand that was the brand like and to get rid of it just for no reason like i don't know if they like because if you watch the disney plus series right you get that little thing where they're yeah. going over the helmets with the light and that says star wars it's very it's okay. I like, like that for the series. I think that's fine. It, it's okay. For the series, for the series, I'm okay with it not having the big, the scrolls. Like, like we don't well, need don't a scroll need, every single man. No, they didn't need the full one. But like, I think I mentioned it before in Clone Wars too. Like they have like kind of like a, um, they have like a, a mini recap thing, thing where they just, um, it's not even a recap. It just is like, it's the, like the title card, right? Star Wars Clone Wars. And it's like, yeah, yeah, and it fades into the background, blah, 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 and you kind of get the Clone Wars, Star Wars music. And then it, it in like the galaxy far away, like the little blue line, it just gives the title of the episode and then into the series. So it's not like the full title crawl, but it's like, hey, you're watching Star Wars. It's the same Like, vibe. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know you're watching Star Wars. And I just thought like anything was better than not doing it. Um. But, like, especially, like, for the series, that little Star Wars thing, it's okay. I would prefer still, like, something similar to the crawl. Or scroll a little bit better or crawl. We always screw this up. The scroll, the crawl, whatever. We always screw this up the every scroll. time we talk about it. I'm pretty sure we change the word every damn time we it's say It's the scroll, that. y'all. It's the scroll, man. Or the, he's a scroll. The crawl is a scroll. Um, it's a, it's a scroll. <laughs> this man. is my new Marvel Just theory. It. It's actually the Star Wars scroll. Did you guys know that? Or did you guys know that? A secret scroll. <laughs> secret scroll. <laughs> like, so, yeah, no, like, like it's, it's just like, it's not, but then when you go to the films, like again, Rogue One, Han Solo, and the movie just starts. I'm like, this feels unnatural. Well, like it how, just like, is jarring. It's jarring. Like any after... other movie, sure. But Star Wars, come on, man. After, like, almost, what was it, 10 years between episode three and Force Awakens? Yeah, 10 how years. How great was it to yeah. be back in that theater oh, with that yeah, crawl again? So like, it was good. immediately. It was amazing. Like I said, it's always my favorite part, even the movies I hate. Even the movies I hate. That's funny, actually. Like, even um, episode so... nine, which I incredibly dislike so, 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 so much, in which we will get to talk about very soon, which I'm excited to talk about the trilogy because, uh, you still got time. I, we we like to rip about it a little bit here, but uh, and it'll be a good debate because I think we have both different opinions on each of the films minus seven. I think we're pretty much on the same page as seven, but we'll save that for you know the next couple of weeks coming up here. Um, yeah, but like even then, it's like that's still my favorite part. Even though even even the. They almost even screwed up the nine, like the crawl in nine. Like they almost screwed it up. They made it so like it was just so poorly written. It was like, oh my god. But you can't ruin the whole Star Wars vibe of it, right? Like, and even if it's terrible, like it's still just because we don't watch it for the words. It's for the feeling. It's for the moment. It's for the excitement. It gets the blood boiling. It gets you excited to go and see Star Wars. And I wish I was in one of those first showings back in like 1977 
for the original when that came on. Like, just to be in that moment would be freaking amazing, man. I love the opening crawl. If you can't tell. Like, I've literally ranted about that um, that, that part the whole time. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Recently, a bunch of the Star Wars, or all the Star Wars films are on sale at uh, work in a bunch of places because May the 4th and oh, stuff. Yeah. And me and, me and Prosser were talking about, you know, okay, well, which ones do we want to buy? Like, because, like, it's 4K is decently on sale. We don't own them on 4K. Good call. And, like, neither of us, uh, neither of us even touched the prequels. <laughs> we weren't even, we're like, yeah, like, let's get these sequel ones. Because I already had Rise yeah. from when it came out. So I'm thinking, like. Oh, like, the sequel. Like, do you I'm mean the sequels or the prequels? Like, the sequel, like, we have. You said the prequels, so I didn't. Yeah, no, like, so we have, so like, you didn't like touch I have the Rise prequels. on 4K. Okay. Yeah, I have Rise gotcha. on 4K because I got it when it just came out because it was part of a kind of a Disney Club thing. Oh, okay. And he got Last Jedi now. I'm gonna buy Force Awakens probably, and then we're we both like, well, yeah, we need to get the original trilogy. Well, that's the priority. And that yeah. was that was the extent of the conversation. And then after that, we're like, wow, neither of us addressed whether or not we're gonna get the prequels in the slightest. Well, why? Like, if you're and already like, buying that many films, like, why would you, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Well, and it's, so it's many. The, is the 4K really going to make those films look any better? No. It might like, actually make episode it. one and two look worse. One, actually, right? probably not so much. But two is where I think we were even talking about when our review, like two's like early, early CGI was just like really rough. And, and it was everywhere. And, and, like, not so much the characters were OK, but like. Certain shots of like Coruscant and stuff. It was like, oh my god! Like everything almost had like a velvet finish, like a really soft, like yep. rushed finish. It was weird. It was weird. But hey, we don't have that problem Unnatural. now. Natural. No, it, and that was fine. Like it was, it was for its time, right? It clearly just doesn't hold up. But and besides, episode two as a whole as a film doesn't hold up, <laughs> really. So who cares, man? Who cares? But let's talk about episode six. That's what we're here to I was talk gonna say, about. I think that's, but that's, like, that's the real testament, though, is that episode six in, still holds episode up. Episode six still holds up. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, and, and that whole trilogy still holds up like, from, from oh, a yeah. tech like, perspective. Like at the end of the day, if I'm going to if anyone who's never seen Star Wars wants to watch Star Wars, honestly, I would be more than content just showing them the three films and being like if you like these three we can watch more but if you don't this is trust me this it, is it's not getting better from here this man. is the best it's <laughs> it's yeah it's really it's not getting better for here from here this is what you need to from see here. after that everything else is it's you can ignore it yeah like maybe i'd squeeze in force awakens but why would i get someone's hopes up for like a thing that's gonna go nowhere <laughs> Yeah, and like, that's it. Like, I don't even want to get into it because we could literally talk about this for hours. Honestly, before we even record this, guys, we probably talked about it for an hour. <laughs> like, like we probably talked about close to an hour. Um, it's just like it. It kills me that seven ultimately goes nowhere. But yeah, let's not. I don't want to get into still it. Still, so it makes much me, hype and it makes, so much hope makes me want to cry. It makes me want to cry a little. But episode six, like, and that was also makes you want to cry, but in like in a, a good, good way. way. Like that was just such a like they let they nailed the finale. Like I, we talked about this before when we were talking about the old trilogy. Ultimately, that whole trilogy is lightning in a bottle, man. Like every movie is lightning in a bottle. Like and the, and there's oh, yeah. a reason they haven't been able to recapture that completely. You know, there's a reason they can capture little bits and pieces, but they've never been able to get that lightning to strike again. Because that series, like, it was just made so well. And not even for the time, for all times. Like, those films are timeless. The stories that they tell, the characters that are involved in these films, uh, these things are timeless. Like, it's not locked into a certain demographic or generation that only a certain generation is going to understand like these are all things we understand we get the themes of you know good versus evil rebellion versus empire um father versus son like family we understand these things so these films are just well, they timelessly made and it, that's why they still hold up today because the storytelling still works like it still applies today and still connects to people today and when it came to this finale, they landed it. 
they landed it probably better than I don't know. I honestly can't think off the top of my head right now of another trilogy that's landed or series of films that has landed the ending quite like Star Wars. If there's another, I guess Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that would be. It. I was gonna like, say Return Lord of the, the Rings. King. I was like, I just remembered Return of the King. I was like, never mind. They probably did just as good well, of a job, to be honest. Because even like Back to the Future, like I I love the three Back to the Future films, but a lot of people don't care for the last one. I think the, the third one, the Western one, is hilarious. I love it. But I, I know a lot of people don't feel the same. Yeah, way. It, it is a very um, like big shift from the other two. That's for sure. It's not the are worst. There other, are there other? Are there other trilogies out there? Yeah, I'm trying, you know, there's there's other trilogies like and just trilogies. I'm trying to think series, The Dark Knight. Yeah, that trilogy. that third film did not stick right? that ending you, at all. And you know what I mean? Like it's so tough. It's so tough to stick the ending of not just one story, but when you have a story going Spider-Man over three. three films. Yeah, Spider-Man 3, another one that had a great one, a fantastic two, couldn't nail and the I... ending. Could, and the film itself is not like horrendously, horrendously terrible, especially looking back in context. Um, but but like it, it definitely fell flat of its own bar, you know? The whole trilogy. Yeah. So like... It, it, it is incredibly uh, Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek Beyond was probably like the strongest of the three Star Trek movies that came out. That's true. It is pretty good. Um, and while it's a strong film, like did it really I can't remember. Honestly, I haven't seen it since it came out. It's been a really long time. I don't remember if they actually like it was a finale or a closing of the story, though, or if it was just like another piece, because like, they are still planning to make another Star Trek. I don't know if it's following this one still timeline wise or not. So I'm not sure if the series is even technically done yet. But like with True. with Star Wars, with Lord of the Rings, you know, that's the finale. You know what I mean? Like those right, are the like it last is a specific film. ending chapter. These are the ending chapters and they nail it. And the ending is always so hard. Even Bad Boys 3, when I went to go see that, like that's another trilogy. And while one and two is my favorite, um... The third one was pretty good for a long time. They actually dealt with some really intense shit, and I was really impressed. And then at the end of that film, like, totally fell apart for me. I was like, okay, this is getting silly now. Um, And if the whole film would have been silly the whole time, I would have been fine. But, like, while it's somewhat of a comedy, they were dealing some real human stuff. And then at the end, they're just like, mm, but, like, witches and weird shit i was like what is going on here? wait what happened yeah what? it's not i can't remember she's not technically technically a witch maybe she is it's I, I i watched that when it came out too before the pandemic so it's been a while um is it a prequel to bright is that what this is? Uh, maybe i don't know like no it's not like a witch in that sense i think it's just i can't remember it's like he has a kid and she's crazy i don't honestly the ending fell apart though like, if you watch the film, you'll be like, wow, this is really good. Like, act one, act two, really, really strong. Some great comedy beats, but, like, just the topics and the themes that they're dealing with. But then when they come to the end of the film, they don't follow up. It's kind of like a left turn. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a sharp right away from everything we've been talking about into something totally different. And it just devolves. And it's hard to stick the landing in anything let alone one movie, but let alone a trilogy. And that's why I think Star Wars is just such a great freaking example of nailing the ending. Like, in every sense of the word, with your characters, with their stories, with the themes that you've had going on, with, like, the whole environment, and even bringing in the Emperor at the very end. Like, he didn't even have a huge part, but he was so impactful how they used the characters. Um... Like well, he was he was just, ominous the entire time, it, and then like you didn't realize how powerful he was. He left you such got a an sense impression, for, man. Like such a presence, right? You got a sense that people were afraid of him. Yeah, but you never understood why because he was until an old that man. final throne room scene. Yeah. Oh, well, and then, and and then when he throne room like, scene. Good lord, mm. that, that entire throne room scene, mm. man. As soon as they come up that elevator, mm. I know, right? Like. <sighs> But I feel Just, like we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're talking about we the are getting first. super ahead of ourselves. I guess we should go back to the beginning. But I just want I mean, to like, point out, like, like technically how... that is the beginning. 
because the first thing that we hear the first thing that we see with the emperor man and that's i think what sets it up is literally yeah the emperor darth right? vader getting off that oh, shuttle saying the emperor is coming darth yeah. vader gets off the shuttle and like that guy being like come on man like we need like we need more people like that's why it's going so slow and then darth vader's just like yeah sure you can tell the emperor that when, when he, he shows arrives up. the emperor is coming and then just the guy's reaction <laughs> yeah the emperor is coming, coming here, here? And it's just he's peeing his pants, and he is not as forgiving as I am. Like it's just I know, and like that. Well, remember we we are just coming off of watching a film where Darth Vader spent majority of it choking his own men when they messed up. Yeah, and then Darth Vader's like, yeah, so the Emperor is not as forgiving as (laughs) I am. He's less. You're just like, how do you get less forgiving than that? No, they really set up the Emperor before they showed him really, really well. well. it stems back to that other conversation we had about, like, there are some villains that you need a lot of build-up for. Like Thanos, you need to get to know him over a few movies. You need to kind of have that build-up of that reputation. And then there's the Emperor, who, like, he has a bit of build-up. More than Darth Vader did, obviously. Cause, like, yeah, the first Darth time we Vader saw just Vader, rolled in a wreck He just shot, walks man. in the room and we know. We're just like, like, shit. <laughs> but they spent, like... Because you, I guess, like, maybe episode five, you get a bit of a sense of, like, that he's Darth Vader's master. But you don't really get a sense for, like, the threat that he is. Yeah. Until that opening scene of Return. And that immediately just sets up everything. Mm-hmm. And then, even, but then when he shows up, you're still kind of like, okay, everyone's afraid of him it. still. Just, but, like, like, I don't get it. Crumply old dude, he man. <laughs> he looks kind of scary. Yeah, like, I guess he's kind of wrinkly and looks like he's dying but like what other than that like what's up with this guy yeah. and like again that that goes back to ian mcdermott's like performance and that's where i, I couldn't just even get believe really they confused. were like the same dude i was like god damn he was better old guy when he was young and when younger, he was old i'm like he... this is confusing to me <laughs> no, no, no. Like, like, like what happened got, like duck lips where did this come from <laughs> as opposed to as opposed to his just like then you will die you will like die. just it's it's a frail it, that that is more threatening than his angry Other old stuff. man Palpatine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I totally but agree. He's, yeah. But just that chilling that that chilling frail old man voice, his cackle, like his cackle was the best in Episode Six. <laughs> they never nailed it again. That was so disappointing to me. Like. But in episode and six, whether man, it was it episode three or episode nine, like they just never nailed the emperor the same never way again. again. Like he was pretty good in three. Like I'll grant him that. Like and you had the character set up and stuff like that a little bit more, and you and got like a he was still enjoyable he, in exactly, nine, but... but he still wasn't exactly the same. In nine, exactly. they totally crapped the bed. Let's just be honest here. They they totally crapped well, the bed in... with one of the greatest characters at Star Wars. But going back to what you said, he's they never still... nailed the laugh. They never nailed the tone. They never even nailed the look again. Like, he looked so weird in three. It's like eight oh, or but... episode, sorry, episode six is like the perfect version of the Emperor. Like, that is the ideal one. And I thought we were going to go back to that look in nine. And then it was just kind of we like a went three. More to the prequel yeah, one and I was and... like, dude, it's like, why wouldn't you make him look at least... You know, where where well, is that like I gray think, skinned, like scarred, deformed? The problem like, with come it, on, man, bring back the emperor. The problem with it, though, with episode three is again, I, and I said this back in the episode three one, the episode three episode that we did. They were so focused on just making the pieces line up that they had to have him get scarred and look like the emperor in episode six by the end of episode three. Like, dude, I, and like, I don't think you I, need. I, I don't think you needed I, that. Honestly, that I part really don't. didn't bug me. It's just how he like. It, it wasn't the fact that he was scarred and deformed or whatever. It was just, but it like they, they went over the top with it. It bugged me that it didn't look like, like it didn't look as good as mm-hmm. it did in episode six. It's because they took they took the episode six makeup and then they like made made a cartoon out of it. They caricature caricature yeah they made it very colory because they gave him a big red and stuff they gave him a big throat and like his like his forehead looked weird and his eyes looked really really weird like they like went full really on yellow sunken. which was bizarre and like it just again like the fact that like i don't believe that he would look healthier <laughs> As the years went on. Yeah, no doubt, right? Like, like, it's like you look way more put together, to be honest, right now. But okay. But okay. And like, and that's... And like, again, he also didn't look like... 
they tried to turn him into that frail old man and it's like but w- w- why he's got 20 some years to get to this frail old man stage yeah. and he's already pretty old in episode three yeah yeah he's already an aged dude yeah like he's already i'd say he's, he'd be about in his 60s well here here's here's the real question when it comes to palpatine in his age and his scarred look who decided to bang this guy and like at what point did someone bang this like old ass dude? And that that is the that's real, the real question. question. And we'll <laughs> like we'll get to that in a few more episodes. Honestly, Matt, when I like, when I watched episode nine, that was what I thought. Like the whole movie, it's like when they're like, "Oh yeah, he, he he had a son, and you're the son's daughter, or whatever." It's like, who banged that guy? <laughs> like that was my biggest question. Oh, there's there's got to be like, a timeline to it. Who did that? And I was like, and it honestly felt like the timeline was off though. Like given her age. And such as well, because well, yeah. Anyway, and I'd, I'd I'd have to look in to see what Ray's age is and see what actually his, her, his actually kid, I think or, technically they answered it in a book, which is again very loose canon nowadays. Who knows how any of that? I mean, stuff that's actually worked. ninety percent of anything. But I think technically his son was supposed to be apparently a failed clone body. So again, it's just one of those things that just that doesn't really track or make sense. But okay, and it's Sheev Junior. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, so it's like technically but not like, your granddaughter, but okay. Because technically not your get... son, but whatever. Wait, did did Palpatine even have a name in Episode Six? Was he Palp- Emperor Palpatine, or was he just the Emperor? Ah, uh, he was just the Emperor. Palpatine didn't come until later on, or like I, he was probably like his character probably had the name Palpatine, um, but they never had it in the actual. I don't think they ever like, said film it. itself. He was always just the Emperor, um. Palpatine, I think, maybe was used in the books or something or behind the scenes. Like, it seemed like people had knowledge about it. Like, when he showed up in episode one, everyone was like, oh, it's Palpatine. It's like, yeah. Because I'm sure, like, people were aware of the actual name by then. But Were they? Because I remember that being a big, like... Because, like, again... I I don't know. I was like... Why are you hiding Palpatine Insidious? (laughs) And that's... I need to look into this. Because, like, why, why would you hide... If everyone knew that Palpatine was the Emperor then why would you like do this whole thing where it's like yes it's darth sidious why couldn't you just show the audience like yeah so like he's playing both sides and but, like if everyone knew then you would arc of if like everyone knew then everyone would know he's playing both sides right i don't know it is an odd thing and that's the weird thing know. is like but even looking even looking at it like going back like i could tell it was the same actor he didn't a hood doesn't hide too much <laughs> no no absolutely not it's a it's the same reason in like some Batman costumes, I get really confused where people are like, who could you be when like, it's a, it's a decent chunk of his face is still showing. <laughs> it's like, he can only be so many. If I, if I showed up in a room full of people who knew me pretty well dressed as Batman, they'd still be able to tell that it, it was, was me dressed as you, Batman. Yeah. It, it's always when they like wear those eye, little tiny eye cover things and everyone's like, who is this person? It's like clearly the same person. It'd be like putting on glasses think, and be like, Jesus, where did Ethan go? Like, <laughs> it wouldn't even make sense. I, my, I don't know. My face changed. My shape, face shape does change quite a bit when I don't have glasses. No, I mean like sunglasses or something. Not like your glasses. Oh, I'm, glasses. Ta- I mean, I'm even talking like my glasses. The Clark Kent Superman thing, I can make an argument for. For sure. And if you're not expecting, so I should if do you're not I... expecting Clark Kent to be Superman, you're not going to see Clark Kent as Superman. I'll change... I'll change my animated head for this episode and get rid of my glasses and see how many people recognize it as me. Uh, fair enough. Anyway, yeah, you know, like, yeah, at the end of the day, right, like, he was set up really well in this film and he was executed and used really well. Like, like he he left an impression. Because when you think about his overall presence in the whole trilogy is so small, like, it's not like he was ever around for a huge tunk, tunk, a huge tunk, a teen tunk, a huge chunk of a screen chunk time. Of chime. Like, his screen time is very low, but, like, he just left an impression. They did the most with him than they've ever done with him before. And he was in the whole prequel trilogy. This is the most, like, just well-executed way they've ever used the Emperor. And, ah, uh, yeah. He's just an excellent part. And that beginning just sets up well, everything that's almost, else. That's almost where, like, it's it's kind of a shame that he has been used in so many of the other things. Sometimes but less like, is more. Right? Yeah. I mean, I did like him in and 3. It, like, I did like him. 
I just didn't like his design more or less. Um, and then hated it in nine. I was like, why would you even bring him? Like, why? Why? But it was just tacked on last minute. <sighs> and you could tell. But like, it's it's, uh, it's a testament, though, to, again, episode six, the fact they can introduce they introduce so many characters in this movie that were like you've never met before, but you immediately got attached to because like completely removing special editions job of the hut. We've never met until this movie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Mon Mothma. We never met Admiral Akbar. We never, it's never a met. trap. Yep. Um, I think that's it. And then Palpatine, that's four, that's four new characters on the Ewoks. So then any of the Ewoks, they introduced five new characters to this movie and like everyone fell in love i mean not everyone a lot of people hate ewoks but like <laughs> they're they're they are very wrong because ewoks are delightful they are delightful yeah i like the ewoks um and terrifying like have you ever played you played the battlefront to the ewok hunt mode you know what i have the game never played the mode because i didn't care it didn't dude, look that interesting dude no it is one of the most terrifying experiences you will ever have playing a game <laughs> like straight uh, up well maybe i'll check highly it. recommend it's so much well, fun. when you think like, about it, it's like, man, those those little dudes were like eating people and stuff, right? Like they were gonna cook. There's, there's actually, heroes, and they totally murdered oh, well, all the rest at, of the stormtroopers and ate them. Like, oh yeah, you get at the dead. end they have those hollowed out stormtrooper suits, <laughs> like That's the helmets and suspect, stuff. It's like, suspect. oh man, you just yeah, anything anyone's eating right now, I'd be like, guys, don't this eat the food farm. <laughs> like, this is like, people. Guys, I know we um, hate the empire, but like, this is a bit far. Let's calm down here. There's actually a comic where a stormtrooper, like, is getting made fun of for, like, oh, yeah, the Empire got beat, like, beat by a bunch of Ewoks. And, like, it's like a Vietnam vet where he's just like, you don't know. You weren't there. Yeah. You have no clue what we went through and, like, how horrifying it was. Like, because it would be. It would be terrifying. <laughs> and that's what I mean. Like, little teddy bear things gotta play. Just, like, murdering everyone. Like, oh, my God. Dude, you gotta play Ewok Hunt, because it's all, like, the game is all based at night, so it's, like, it's dark, you can't see anything unless you're an Ewok, then you can see fine. Yeah. Like, oh, man, like, I wish you had, because you have it for Xbox, right? I do, yeah. I wish you had it for PlayStation, because I would totally play it with you, because it is so, so worth it. Like, it's just so much fun. <laughs> um, But, like, again, you introduced so many new concepts. I guess the Sarlacc bit's new, too, but, like, um, just so many new characters were introduced and instantly became icons. Yeah. Like everyone, well, I mean, it's hard not to notice another woman added to the roster in Star Wars at this point. <laughs> so when Mon Math Mothma shows up, like, of course we're gonna notice. It's like, hey, Leia's not the only one now. <laughs> <laughs> There's some more ladies around. What's going on? Let's get all the Star Wars ladies. Lando's around. still kind. <laughs> Lando's still kind of alone, but that's yeah, fine. Lando, you got two Lando's women totally now. on his own. <laughs> like you're on your own, brother. Good luck. You got that alien guy. Is, is he related to Mace Windu? <laughs> like, remember, like the when, amount when, of when, shock, like, man. When, like, I remember too when like uh, Episode Seven was coming out and like Finn was and black. And everyone's like, like it must out. be Lando's son because he's the only black guy I in the know. galaxy. <laughs> it's like that's not how this works. <laughs> like, Oh, and then shit. people freaking out because a black stormtrooper that's unheard of and it's like, like they could all serious? be black you literally would have you no don't idea know. <laughs> they could literally like, all be black you wouldn't have any clue like it's like that's the thing like that's where it just again man it's just it's it's so funny that like and, and like it's just i guess it kind of showcases a bit of old hollywood but like it's just it's weird it that is Lando was the only black man yeah. in the, it is, it is. It's, no, it is, actually, it is. no. I want to say there, I, uh, I feel like there was definitely a couple black uh, X-Wing pilots. At least one. Mm, I cannot recall. For sure in episode, I know, like, in the sequels, I think. There's a couple black. And in the prequels, too. In episode, in episode oh, one. Oh, yeah, there's there one sure. in the prequels, too, yeah. I feel like episode six there is. I know for sure there is a there is an Asian pilot in episode six because he's the guy who like um he's the, the there's too many of them and then he gets blown up. 
Dude, that entire fight scene, like the guy who crashes into like so the guy who crashes into the oh Star that's Story, right like, he's an Asian yet. Dude, yeah no um that's a white guy what the Asian dude is at the very beginning of the battle where like I they're you said, getting overrun oh that part yeah no no I know what you, yeah because you I know you what screamed, you're talking so, like, about I'm like I'm like I, I know which part you're talking, talking about guy, and I was like oh yeah no I he's guess the guy he who's like be Asian and then yeah like, no he's white he's I was like, like there's okay. too many of them and then he gets blown up like yeah no that entire so fun fact about Return of the Jedi that's the one my mom walked in on me watching. Quoting, saying the, quoting the lines, doing the sound effects, and say, singing the music. I thought you were gonna say something else. And I was movie. like, Ethan, this is a family podcast. Jesus, man. But it's it's Star Wars. I can't help myself. <laughs> what, are you, what are you gonna do? But like, there's only one choice here that I see. Exactly. <laughs> but no, like my mom came into the room and I was watching Return of the Jedi, and this was in our new house. So this, this is me being like 17 years old. And I'm quoting all the lines. I'm singing the music. I'm doing the sound effects in rhythm at the exact same time, beat for beat with the movie. Yeah. And then watching it this time, I was a little bit off. <laughs> but for the most part, like I still had that entire fight scene, that entire pilot exchange, everything just friggin' memorized. Pretty much locked down, eh? Like it's, so it's, it's just hilarious. It's just. I don't know, because I don't feel like... I, I don't think this is the one I've watched the most. I feel like I've watched, like, episode four more, but, like, it's just ingrained into my brain from now on. Like, at the end of the day, if I never saw Star Wars again, I would be sad, but, like, I can remember it incredibly vividly. So you'll, al you'll so, like, always I, have the memories of Star Wars, no matter what, man. Always still have the memories. Oh, exactly. But, like, um, back to my original point introducing so many more characters and like uh, number one you didn't need a backstory on every single one of them but you felt connected to every single one of them and i think that was huge that's a huge accomplishment well and for sure by then you're connected to their plight right like you were connected to their fight to their struggle and yeah like by then we're all fully aware of how crappy the empire is and, like, they're building a second Death Star? Yeah, we better blow that crap up, too. Like, we're just with them, right? right? So when they introduce these other characters, it's like, you don't need a backstory. You just know these guys are the ones in charge of the Rebellion. We're with you. Like, there's no well, resistance on top there. Of it. And then the flip side is, again, introducing the new characters who are a threat to the characters we spent two movies with. Exactly. All you need to know, yeah. like, you meet Jabba the Hutt, and you're immediately like, oh. Even before you meet Jabba oh, the Hutt. Like, also, you're like, that it? dude's pretty greasy as hell, so it's not... They make him very dislikable, like, but also lovable. But they also do such a good job. <laughs> they do such a good job building him up, though, because we get to go through two films without seeing. Um, him. We go through minus again the special edition where they added CG Jabba, which doesn't have the same weight in the oh, slightest. No, no pun intended. Not a, like same but weight like, or even design. It's like Jabba in six like, clearly can't move anymore. Jabba yeah. and like four is just rolling down the street and he's like okay just mobile. and he's just tiny like he's just tiny compared to yeah like dude you got fat um, in the last couple of years I mean, what you been eating man and tall <laughs> like you got huge. and then um but literally that whole the journey of 3po and r2d2 and they're talking about like our 3po is talking about how scary he is of Jabba. And then you get to that gate, which that's a, that's a good change in my opinion, because they made the gate huge in comparison to what it was in the very original cut. Mm -hmm. They blew that gate up and just like, like as a kid, I always jumped every time like that eye robot yeah, pops, pops out. out of the, <laughs> yeah. Like I always made yeah. me jump growing up and like you immediately like, oh, OK, this is serious. And then you see the pig guards, the Gamorreans, and then you <laughs> meet good old Bib Fortuna, who has a not so kindly death <laughs> in the mandalorian <laughs> he gets pretty wrecked man he also got fat it's like you guys need to stop eating so much stuff you guys need to get off that chair and go for a walk every once in a while because <laughs> damn also damn man. also bib fortuna is part of like and I, this is where i miss pross right now he is the reason for one of the biggest jokes inside jokes between me and prosser oh yeah and it's because he well, because has that line of like he says like Jabba no Wana Wanga or something yeah. like that. And so I looked at Bra we were just watching the movie and I turned to Bra and I'm like, hey, so you wanna wanga? Like put up my hand like I was gonna smoke something. <laughs> and that's just been like a running oh, gag for like man. this has been like 
this has been like a four year, four or five year gag where me and him will just like look at each other randomly, and just be like, "You want a wanga?" <laughs> and like we've translated that into like the death stick scene, like just anytime. Hey, you want a death stick? Any. T- you want a wanga? <laughs> Anytime, so, like a movie mentions weed or anything like that, we're like, <laughs> you, you want, want a wanga? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, Jabba, no want a wanga. <laughs> and like, we were doing a Star Wars RPG game with one of our friends, and like, we kept throughout throughout the game annoying him, <laughs> just asking, "It's like, does this character want wanga. a wanga?" <laughs> Every time, man, I could be like, "God damn it, stop it!" <laughs> that was basically his stop reaction. It. It's like, no, no, I, I don't, don't want a wanga. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually pretty funny i like that does your character uh want a wonga like no god damn it i don't want a wonga we just want to play the game stop A-holes. asking want a wonga quit ruining the game <laughs> and we just we've had many a night where we just giggle like little children about you want a yeah wonga. that sounds about it's right just the funniest yeah. it's so that great though and so it's all accurate. thanks to <laughs> oh thanks to bib fortuna thank you so much for that great thank you terrible bib character <laughs> thank you so much but again you, you the more you meet so many greasy gross characters and then you get to job and you're like oh he's worse than all of these yeah. guys. <laughs> like he's worse than the like, pigs it's like you saw pigs you're like damn those guys are ugly then you see job but you're like but then you saw mind. bib fortuna and you're like ugly, okay well, Bib Fortuna well, still looks better than the pig, so you're just like, you know. I don't know, man. No, like, dude, those Gamorreans were greasy as hell, dude. They look like they sat and ate bacon on their belly. Like, they just look greasy. You're like, okay. I get it. You're pigs. You're greasy. You're dirty. That's your thing. Bib Fortuna looked a little bit cleaner, so I was like, fair enough. Then you see Jabba, and you're like, I see why those pigs are so damn greasy. It's like, clearly... Being not greasy is also job is just here. naked. Yeah, well, job is just a big. Everyone slug. else is wearing clothes. Yeah, he's just like he's just naked. No one has a problem with that. Clearly not. His it's species like, is just like well, they're the huts, man. You don't have with them. You just murder yeah, you. But You're like, not gonna be like goddamn worm. Put some freaking clothes on, man. Put some clothes on. Just get eaten by a rancor, and ten seconds later, well, that was worth it. <laughs> like. Just die uh, for nothing? Like, Come on, man. I'm not going to die to tell Jabba to put a shirt on. Come on. And that, man, that scene, the scene with the scene with R2-D2 and C-3PO where they're showing the message. Luke, and like, yeah. I was thinking about that. And like either Luke had zero intention on collecting those droids again. Or like, no, no, he planned to come. No, and he kill. was like, planning. He knew, he knew Jabba exactly was gonna say, what he was doing. He was just setting up his small... chess pieces. There's a small part of me that's just like, I don't know. I don't know, man. Luke might have just been, like, cool with... Like, if if Java would have been like, sure, I'll take the droids for Solo, cool. Would Luke have done it? Do you think Luke would have come back for R2 <laughs> like, and like Or do you think he would have just been like... I think he knew he wouldn't do the exchange. exchange. I think that's the idea, right? Like, But, yeah. I mean, like, because Jabba's a greasy just... bastard. And he put all that effort in to get Han. He's not going to give it up for two droids. I, he, he didn't put any effort. He put money into it. And hey, that man, that is him. effort to a super fat Actually, slug no. man. No, he didn't even put effort into it. Darth Vader put effort into it, and then he reaped the rewards. That's true. Because Vader was like the one who was all like, oh yeah, no, I want to collect these people. And Bob was like, well, cool. Han has like a bounty on his head. Can I just take him back to like Jabba? And like and Vader's like, yeah, sure, do it. I don't care. <laughs> do what you want, man. Do it, man. Uh, do you have a favorite moment in the Java stuff? Dude, I love the Java stuff. I love that whole opening section. Like, whole like, thing, like I know, I think you know one of the criticisms, especially comparing to Empire. Like, if you're having that discussion with people, like a lot of people will say, like the opening Tatooine. Like, this is just something I've heard. I don't know. I guess if a lot of people say it, but like the one thing that I hear quite often too is like that whole beginning thing is kind of almost like a separate side mission and it is, but it's so great to like see those characters and it's, it's that evolution of Luke, right. To being that Jedi Knight, like sets up his journey of Luke. It's not just rescuing Han Solo. Like that's just a part of it. You know what I mean? But like it's about establishing Luke and his new power level and his new, you know, him being a Jedi. Also his, also, it establishes a bit of his hubris, too, because he rolls in he, with no problem. He he absolutely rolls in with no problem. He, like, you know, pushes aside the pig guards, and then he, like, 
mind tricks Bib Fortuna, and then he gets to Jabba, and he's like, ah, yes, I know everything. I'm good. Come on, Jabba. And and then he gets put into a Rancor pit. And he wasn't prepared for that. He no, survives, but there's like was genuine like, he fear. He was like, oh shit, I gave my lightsaber to R2. Like, that probably wasn't the best idea. <laughs> Obi Wan, Obi Wan would be pissed. He'd be like, "This weapon is your life. Is your <laughs> like, life, you damn fool? Giving it to a droid. I mean, it turned out okay oh, later exactly. on. But come on, man, that really would have been useful in that well, rancor if, pit. But it was if okay. Luke didn't find that rock, like, well, yeah, no, to like just hit, hit break that uh, gate. But like in like, general, yeah, like he it, lucked it was out. Just, like it, it was a great, like that whole thing is a great character moment. It, and shows like the evolution. I think it's ultimately here. Here's where we're getting to. It shows the evolution of the characters before you put them into the, you know, finale of wrapping everything conflict. off, cop, you know, capping everything off of the empire Vader with the emperor. Uh, it shows the evolution of these characters where they come and to put them back on Tatooine where the series started is poetically beautiful. Like, it's just a great well, like, connection even... to see, you know, go from farm boy Luke to now his complete butterfly effect as a Jedi Knight. And even to see the differences between Leia, too, right? Um, like, what she's willing to do though, like, for Han. Yeah. Like, it's just... 100%. I would, I would argue, too, with Luke's journey, after the whole thing with Jabba, he does kind of approach... He does approach more of the stuff with Darth Vader with a bit more cautiousness. Carefully, yeah. Like he's, he's not yes, as he still headstrong. Goes and, like, turns yeah. himself in, but like, and like, cause he's still a bit, he's still a little bit cocky when like, when they're on the sail barge because he does threaten Job. Like, well, no, cause he doesn't threaten Job as much as like Han does, where he's like, yeah, you know, where he, you tell that piece of filth that he's not gonna get such courtesy from yeah. us, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> and then like Luke's just like, hey, three PO just warned Jabba, like you know. He has a chance to end Do this piece. Or, or die. Yeah. And like, and again, they, they luckily come out on top, but Luke gets a little beat up. That, that, which that actually, was no, a much, so, that was a much tighter plan though. Like, I think ultimately they knew that's where they were going to end up. Like, I think that was ultimately so the point. Um, I don't know if the, but you know, clearly he, the rancor didn't seem part of the plan. You know what I mean? No, like, that was the rest not of that of whole thing seemed part of the plan. But like, like I have a feeling the original plan seemed to be, part of the plan <laughs> i think the original plan was to have r2 in that chamber with him like in the initial chamber so like if he needed oh, something he could that, just like, get that... the lightsaber immediately kind of thing yeah, and just maybe. break house and that that didn't maybe, happen yeah um so luke gets his hand shot in this movie right yep <laughs> and then in last jedi this is jumping ahead a few films his hand still has like I saw this recently in a video, and they pointed out like his hand still has like the hole. Oh, from like, the his blast robotic of fire. hand still has the, and like, like it's the same hand. Okay, like yeah, I'm like that's a fun Easter egg, but also like it's been thirty years. He didn't replace his prosthetic <laughs> at <laughs> like, all. He didn't repair it. Like it like clearly, I can understand not clearly, having one with skin, but, <laughs> but like yeah, the whole hand part of it clearly just fell off. Like it's just the bone now. And like, and so. Did he just not like what? Like no, that doesn't make any sense. It's a fun Easter egg, but it's one that just logically doesn't make it makes any no sense, sense to be yeah, there. No, it doesn't. No. So it's it's just weird. But like but, that's that's actually a moment I learned at a young age. I don't like watching heroes get hurt, and that was one that always made me uncomfortable. Was Luke getting shot in the hand because oh, it really? came out of nowhere, and it's like no, my heroes get hurt. Like, it's no. the same thing with Qui Gon. Oh, uh, when Qui Gon, Qui -Gon dies, died. yeah, really messed me up. Oh, that was a rough go. And eventually, eventually you get past it, but like... Tis life. It was like, <laughs> it was terrible. Luke getting his hand cut off was another one like that really messed with me. But then Vader gets his hand cut off. I've never had a problem with that at all. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Okay. Like, yeah, you... you like, as a kid, I used you're to the like... bad guy. I used... I used to have to fast forward past those parts because they would scare me. So it's like little six-year-old Ethan being like, nope, <laughs> nope. Yeah. And you're just like, we'll just, we'll just keep moving forward here. I can't deal with this. Right I know now. what happens. I don't need to see it again. <laughs> honestly, but like, honestly um, though, that like that whole Tatooine section, I love, like, I love the beginning and the end of this film so much. Like I, I enjoy the middle too. Like it's not wrong with like the whole metal thing, like going but just that beginning and, and end, but the beginning and the end is so strong. And if ever you're telling a story or doing anything, really, you got to nail the beginning and you got to nail the end. Because at the end of the day, that's what people remember. 
right? Like if you're putting on a program or a presentation, you put all your best shit at the beginning or the end. Because no, like the middle stuff, that's rememberable. Like you maybe have a certain high, couple high points in there. But like what people, what really resonates with people is where it starts, where the story ends, right? Like that's really what resonates. And again, if you do trash in the middle and it doesn't even connect to the end, well, then your end, whatever, could be really great. You know, it doesn't, the overall film is not, but the way again, lightning in a bottle, they just wrapped everything up so beautifully, so nicely and how they presented like, even when I think about the imagery between the beginning and the end of this film, like the brightness of Tatooine and the darkness of the of the Emperor's the throne, throne room, room you the know space. What I mean? Like, it's just and like, oh, Even Endor, man. God. And, and Endor is a this really complete opposite from Tatooine again, right? Because it's a You forest. start in this dry desert area, yeah. and then you get... Like, they just, um, they just... Uh, it, it was... I just, yeah, I love this film, but very, but very I know, much right? specifically, I really, really enjoy the whole job of the hut, um, beginning piece. So, um, it's great. So the Sar, the Sarlacc pit. I have a question oh, for you about oh, the Sarlacc wait, pit. Oh wait, just wait before we go into the Sarlacc pit. Oh wait, because I just they said I really love the beginning. Let me clarify: there are things that I dislike about the digital enhancements at the beginning now um that never you, you leave jedi rock that alone. never you, oh my god i hate that you leave jedi no, rock alone i hate it i oh so does prosser but hate it like i i'm, I'm okay hate with it, it it's a bomb with a passion it totally now do you hate the song or do you hate the cg i hate both of it because here here's the thing man like i love the I song just, it's such a good no. song i was like yeah, get the hell out of here shut the hell but, but that swing that swing that bah, 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 but it totally ruins the whole aesthetic of what's getting set up in this gangster hideout like this whole gangster well, like, hideout especially when you go back to like you know before all the digital remastering it was very much echoing back to that um uh cantina scene right like it was dark it was dingy you had that kind of chill music but it was in the background it wasn't obtrusive the focus was not on the music the focus was on the environment and creating that aesthetic and then you're like let's throw this super loud jazzy ass yelling crappy looking cgi aliens in there and bring that to the forefront while other things are happening and it just distracts and it takes away and it looks terrible and it totally ruins the whole environment they've had set up the entire time they're doing a great job but then you throw that in there it ruins freaking everything of that aesthetic until that whole damn song is over and they just shut up and go back to the film i hate that with a passion like if i could take anything out of that film and i would again we'll talk about that at the end of the film i, I would i would put the old song back at the end of the film wub dub bring that wub dub back <laughs> yum, yum. bring that yum dub wub dub whatever bring that shit back but if i had a choice and i can take anything out i would take that thing out because it is the most distracting egregious just complete disruption of what you're trying to accomplish in those scenes like and it just totally throws off the mood it'd be like i don't know what's something super serious like it'd be like lord of the rings and at the very end, when they're like all like when he comes to the hobbits and he's like, my friends, you bow to no one. And everyone like bows to the hobbits. And then some alien comes in. And it's like, it would be like, what the hell is going on? Like if some random CGI band jumped in there and started playing a song. It's like, don't ruin the freaking moment. Don't ruin the effect of what you got going on. And that's what that song does. And I hate it. And I hate the CGI too. It's terrible. And it gets all up in your face. Drives me nuts. Anyway, oh, that yeah. is my I rant. Enjoy it for what it is. <laughs> well, that's because you, my friend, have no taste. <laughs> I, I just, I like terrible <laughs> As things. As what I'll you've admit told that. me many times, you, my friend, have no taste. We will disagree, I agree have. to disagree on that one because I hate, I hate it so much, man. I hate it so much. I want to so do much. some research because, like, I know. So that I want to say that song was planned, like he wanted to have something like that in like the original. Oh, I release, don't doubt. It. Like, there's a like, reason it got back in there. 
You know what I mean? Like, but like so many other things that you cut out because it doesn't fit or it doesn't work, you know, and that's like, where I think there's like, a reason the things with, like, get cut. Well, the, that's why like the bad, like the CG where like they're so close, I'm pretty sure it was just to cover a bunch of puppets. Like I'm, I need to do more research into it. What I want to say that was the main reason why like he, like the guy gets in your face so much and like she gets in your face is to cover their original puppets. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise like they, and that's what, that's where like, I'm okay with it because like, I guess George Lucas wanted it from the beginning. I just also, I think I'll give a crap the what song wants, on it's. Yeah. What was the best for the own, film was to not have that in there. Oh, I... And I can agree with that. I can agree that, like, it really it really disrupts the tone. I just also... I love that song and what it does to Prosser. <laughs> just, I'll start playing. We'll be just hanging out, having a good time. And I'll just, just like, ruin see his my, day. my playlist and be like... And he just hears that opening. Bah, 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 and he just immediately... He's like, oh, you. You. Oh, you. Like, you know, I was having a good evening. <laughs> yeah, until you <laughs> ruined it. Thanks a lot there. Thanks like, a lot of you. I, I, it's just fun. Like, it's just a funny, it's just a funny out there moment. And, like, it doesn't add anything It at takes all. away. Because, like, like the, the Twilight still is going to die. We know it's going to happen. But, like, it's still... <laughs> It is one of the funniest moments in Star Wars, in my opinion, because it just has no, it has no reason no, to be No, and there. it has and no like, place. You know what would be funny, though? If someone edited those aliens in and that song in to, like, random scenes in, like, serious movies or TV shows, like funeral scenes or something, those aliens just start rolling up, the music starts playing, <laughs> like, everyone's trying to have a funeral. I would honestly, I would think that, that'd be a great YouTube video. Just edit those guys into, like, random, like, su- you know what? random Don't, movies forget it y'all i'm doing it i'm doing it if you take my idea i will find you cc you have to edit them into the end of step brothers and no like serious films serious no, i mean stuff. like because that's exactly what they fit do the... i'm gonna ruin everything now for everyone enjoy i'm fine with figure this. out how to make this I work accept it. you leave snice noodles alone <laughs> he did nothing to hurt you God, I hate that. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. The rest of the whole Jabba's Palace thing, I freaking love and still do. I just, in the new versions, I hate, I hate that song so much. It's so funny. Thanks, George Lucas. Thanks. Like, the rest of the terrible CGI and add-ins that they add in 4, and, like, 5 we talked about isn't, like, egregiously terrible by any means. The best out of the 3, like, like, they did the least amount of stuff. But, like... Yeah, well, all the stuff in four and Tatooine, that's also pretty rough. Uh, this is by far well, like, the like, worst for me. Like, out adding of all the, the things they added and changed. Just so, so bad. So here's the thing. Um, Ewok eyes blinking, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, yeah, that I don't notice makes it. Makes no difference to me. And no. I would argue that the worst, the worst thing out of, if I had to choose between getting rid of Jedi rocks or getting rid of something else... I would get rid of Vader's no at the end. That's compelling. When he says when he says no yeah, before throwing the emperor down. That's, that is if I if you had to choose one to get rid of. No, I, I, would, I would still get rid easily, I would still get rid of Jedi Rocks, man. I hate it that much. No, I, I really don't like the no. When you make a very compelling argument by bringing up the no, because I'd for, totally forgotten about that. Um, but I still hate Jedi Rocks so much. Seem to me so Jedi much. Rocks is so Jedi Rocks is so inconsequential, like it's there and then it's gone, and it's kind of like, okay, that was weird, but moving on. No, it is Whereas consequential like, to me, man. It totally just takes me out of the film, and I hate anything that just totally rips me out. But I hate it. The no is annoying. The no takes but, like it doesn't the no take takes me, out. me out, and it doesn't bug me. But it changes much. the character. It changes the character motivation too. It changes like it changes that whole scene. You don't need him to say no. <laughs> Why do you need him to say no? No, is it's that like his just, catchphrase it's now. The Vader like, catchphrase. I, because well, well, it, it's, if you think about it, he says it in episode three, uh, and then he says it in episode five no. for sure. Because he's like, "No, I'm your father," and then, uh, and then he says it in episode six, and like, I feel like he says it in episode four. No. I feel like he's got to say no at some point in episode four. I'm surprised. I'm surprised George Lucas didn't add him saying no as he's spinning out into space at the end of episode Yeah, no four. tell, right? That, uh, that no. also seems... <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> like, 
or that or would like make Ad, more like, sense. Like Ad's line from episode one, like we could do spins. That's a good Spinning. trick. That's a neat trick. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but like, but that's the thing. That's where, like, literally, for me, I can live with Jedi Rocks because, again, it's there and then it's gone and it doesn't impact the story. It doesn't change anything. To me, adding the no, it changes the context of Vader. It changes that that solemn moment of him realizing, oh, this is my son and I need to choose. The no doesn't clarify anything. It doesn't make anything clearer. <laughs> Yeah, like it just, it's it, kind of it, it's just weird. It, but it doesn't like yeah, it doesn't change anything for me though. Like it, it it doesn't change the character. Like it makes sense like he's thinking about it like um like I'm not going to let my son die. Like no, this is bullshit. Like no, no, you no you die kind of thing, you know? Like it doesn't take away anything from that decision. It's not like it was a scene where Vader decided the opposite and was like, "Yes." You know what I mean? Like or he was Gosh. supposed to like do something completely different. Like that was George just vocalized the somewhat imagined eternal dialogue that was going on inside of Vader. Now the fact that Vader vocalized in the first place is questionable to his character, right? But maybe not so much after three. Well, it's, um, but but it's again specifically I don't but, know what it doesn't actually change the context of what's happening. But like, I don't know why I don't know why George Lucas is so obsessed with the word no, because even <laughs> in in episode three, if he just screamed, if he just let out a cry, it would have been so much better than yeah, the no, the no thing is if he just let out like a like if he just oh screamed. God. Let's be honest though, like okay. Star Wars dialogue, especially Rin exclusively by, by George, George Lucas. Lucas without being touched up by anyone is always rough. So honestly, it doesn't even surprise well, me. Like it just if, does. If he wanted to, if he wanted to add like just some grunts, just some like ah, like fine. It would be weird, but it would be better than no. Yeah. No. The no thing is so rough. It's so rough. Just so rough. But you do make a compelling argument though. Like if I get rid of two things, it would be now. those two things. No, but, you can only get rid of one. But if I had to get rid of one, one it's still Jedi Rocks, man. Like, it's so disturbing. You... It's so, so, like, just disturbing. And in, it's such a... If you had to have Jedi Rocks, but you could get Yub Nub back, would you have Jedi Rocks to get Yub Nub? God, man, that's like picking one I'm of your children. Curious how, <laughs> like, I'm just curious how far... Man, Except like for one of the children child. you want to get rid of. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like having to pick between your child and someone's random kid like oh to get rid of like, this random kid you get have your to... child back like get rid of this random kid no oh, i don't know like that's ethically questionable um like <laughs> i think it's a good question that is a great think, like i'm curious debate question this is right? like this is my new barometer for like for specifically for you and i think for prosser now of like like, what questionable stuff are you willing to do to get rid of Jedi Rocks? <laughs> what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> what would you do rid to get Jedi rid of Jedi Rocks? <laughs> what would you do ooh, ooh, to kill Jedi Rocks? <laughs> all right, I would all right, Matt. do some pretty serious shit, man. Um, all right, Matt. You can get rid of Jedi Rocks, but you need to kill this random puppy. <laughs> God. <laughs> Just the one for now. <laughs> that's sick, man. This is like your version of Saw. Like <laughs> just trap you uh, in a that's room. You know what? Like my playing worst Jedi torture. Rocks. Yeah, just trapped in a room with Jedi Rock. Like to get out, you must kill this puppy. I'd be like, no. Oh my gosh, dude. I don't no. Mm. I hate Jedi Rocks a lot a lot like it's such an egregious add-on like it's so terrible i would not kill a puppy think, though man like if it was someone's like well, maybe if it was like a big dog that was a dickhead that was ugly and old and shit like at the that at bit the my end kid day, or something man, like, you know what i mean like <laughs> in a I very specific scenario when it comes when it comes to movies and when it comes to like I don't know. When it comes to me in movies, I don't think there's anything that I hate enough that I would actually do anything like 
even remotely terrible to get rid cool. of it. Yeah, no, it's a movie, like, man. I don't think so. The the it's a movie. It's a movie. You, we can like, fast forward like, it, right? Well, at the end of the day, like you just watch it once, then you won't watch it for five years or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's but like, and again, movie. Jedi Rocks. It's not your life. Jedi Rocks is a part you could skip over. Like it's one of those things that it's like, okay, we can just fast forward this stuff. It is, but you're not going to because whatever, man. No, it's just like it's too much effort just, at that point. Just, just sit through the minute of pain, with the pain, right? But like, it is like I would change other things in the film, but like, yeah, I'm not gonna like you know murder things, but like, <laughs> of I just, not. I just, it, it's. No, Matt, how desperate are you? I <sighs> God, Jedi Rocks is the worst. I just wanted to point that out. I just wanted to point that out. We spent like a long time talking about it, but like it. it, it oh, I knew we were. A, it's I such was a prepared. big point to bring up, though, because it's so just <sighs> egregiously terrible. Like to kill the tone of a scene and an environment that you're building is literally like filmmaking murder, well, like, man. Like why? Then don't even put in the effort to build the scene, man. Why don't you just have a bunch of random shit happen? Who gives a crap at that point? Like, I'll bring up my counter then. Uh, the thing that I hate the most in this movie. Fair enough. Let's do it. Um, the Sarlacc pit. Why does it have a beak? I think that's the dumbest decision <laughs> yeah, that, that we made. Pretty bad. Was giving it a beak because, like, what's more terrifying than just an open pit of teeth? Yeah, exactly. Like, it didn't need. I uh, see terrible CGI beak that they've never fixed. Like, and that's been around since the special edition. Like, and it just like, no, you didn't need that. Like you didn't need, like, I remember there's nothing wrong. I remember watch first, first watching that when this Sarlacc pit had a beak. Cause like my uncle had like all the old VHS, right? Yeah. Before like the new releases. So that's the one I'd watch. And I was watching it and I was like, I do not remember that thing having a freaking beak. Like, when did that get there? <laughs> like, you go back and watch it. Like, oh, it was added on. Like, that was kind of before I had an understanding of what was going on there. Um, but, but it was weird. Like, it was a weird it's, decision. It's a ter- it, yeah, like, it's not as egregious, but it is not anything. Like, so many of the things they added in don't actually add anything to it. In fact, they make the concept worse most of the time exactly like again there's nothing more terrifying to me than just like an open pit with teeth like that's that's way more like tentacles coming out of it yeah. unsettling yeah, yeah. then then just like an extra like because it's not like the beak chews you at all like it doesn't nibble on you it's just it doesn't even have its own teeth like it, it just pulls you in like in exactly. fact you it just, miss all the extra... teeth because the beak just swallowed you because the like, beak okay yeah it's it's just an it's an extra orifice that doesn't make any sense at all. Even for the animal, it, it doesn't bizarre. make sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's why does it have all the teeth on the outside if the, <laughs> if it's got a just a separate mouth? Well, yeah, from an evolutionary standpoint, that makes zero sense. <laughs> like, uh, it just it was that 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 gets me more than Jedi rocks. Like any time that I watch that scene, I'm just like, oh, there's the beak again. Oh, there's the beak again. Uh, why is it there? Because again, Jedi Rocks happens and then it's gone, and I just don't think about yeah. it. But the, that beak is there for for that entire sequence. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just so in like tuned to me, like I, I, like not just the music, but again, like for me, like so much about filmmaking and watching films is like the tone and the environment that you're setting up, like. You know, to get the right the right tone for what you're trying to communicate and the story you're trying to tell, and then to throw something in, like, just throw something like that in there is to me like just the worst crime. Like, it's just taking a solemn moment, or or I don't know. It's like it's like having like a completely still like pond or something like just glass and just like, shatter see the reflection with that. and then like toss a big ass rock big ass there, rock. which is cool which is cool <laughs> like you know the water ripples and stuff but like that's the effect it creates like it's just like no no it'd be you like have taking, this perfect like, like pure clean mirrorless water like you set it up you put in all the effort to make it happen and then some random guy just throws a giant ass rock in it it's like come on man no better yet it's someone takes a giant rock and throws it and then nothing <laughs> happens. 
You don't even get the satisfaction of the ripples. It just... It, oh, poop, and everything's man. still there. But, yeah. I mean, anyway, it's a great sequence. At the end of the day, like, that whole Jabba's Uh-oh. Palace thing, like, without, especially without the add-ons. But, you know, with it, it's still fantastic. It's still really, really great. You get to see the characters... Uh, in their kind of evolved form, you get to see their new personalities. You get to see the development that they've gone over, you know, through the years and through their journey before in their, you know, their final form, they're thrown at the main antagonist at the end of the film um, and go and enter their like the and real And then there's conflict. Han just being like. there's Han who's like, I've just been frozen in carbonite for like it, three years or some whatever the years. Actually, a year. Dude, two? no, like that's. Han is just confused the rest of that movie. Like, when you look at him, like, think about him in the last two-thirds of that movie. He's just confused he's the <laughs> entire... He's just like, yeah, I guess so. Like, yeah. All right, we're he doing this now. He probably got some brain damage. Okay. <laughs> Ewoks, all right. <laughs> Whatever, man. Oh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, you and Luke want to be together? Like, okay, I guess so. I'll I have no idea what's way. going on still. <laughs> like, I'm so confused. <laughs> like, poor guy. Just oh, been out like, of it for years. Like, oh, rough. Man, the only other thing that I kind of want to address with Jabba's palace thing isn't even the palace. Like, like we didn't even talk about the Rancor, really. But, like, like what else is there to say other than, like, the Rancor? Rancor's awesome. Yeah, the Rancor's awesome. Like, like, it's, like, the one of the most iconic creatures in Star Wars, right? Especially if you're thinking about, like, threatening, and a, bear. Uh, a threatening creature. Right? The design, I think, was based off a of potato and a bear mashed Honestly, together. wouldn't be surprising. <laughs> I know, it looks like it. Um... <laughs> But, like, honestly, I I know it's made fun of to death, but, like, the nodding bear. scene. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The big potato. Wait, how, do, how do you how do you feel about the nodding scene? Oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, no. It, I love, it, I love it's that. Fu- it's fun. Like, it was just, it was fun. It was good. I, I have it's, no it's problem with it. It's a habit now it. that, um, it's a habit that I have to join in anytime I watch it now. It's just like I have to start all the nod- people randomly. <laughs> like how anyone didn't see anything coming is beyond me. How they're like, wait, why are all these guys nodding at each um, other? Like this is just throw them in the pit. What the hell's taking so long? Just thirty nods later. It's it's super well, funny. Yeah, exactly. I was just it. gonna say the, the family guy like, parody of the nods, yeah. That was good. Like but no, like like honestly, man, that first that first opening just really solidifies the film. Yeah. Like, and it just, it sets it up and you're just, you get your, like, you honestly, get your that first is... hint of the emperor, like invader and like, no, he's going to be in play. And he's clearly a more dangerous threat than Vader. Like you go into One Tatooine, like... get to see the evolution of these characters. And it's just, and Tatooine, it's excellent. It's so it's, good. It's almost like its own mini movie. It because is. As soon as it yeah. ends, as soon as it ends, you just get that sense of breath when like, Luke flies off and Leia and them fly off. And they just talk over the intercoms and then just there's that breath, that moment of like, OK, we can relax now. Like it, it, it like, is honestly like and and it's so strange because I don't think it would work in a lot of like a lot of films. If they did that, it wouldn't work. Um, but because we've spent so many time with so much time with these characters, we've seen them evolved over the other two. Um, I think it's OK to have this kind of separate off piece to give that character development. But like. It doesn't really fit in other than, like, you know, we get to see the character's involvement or rescuing Han, but it doesn't directly lead into, like, events coming up. You know what I mean? Like, they leave, and again, like you said, you get the breath, and then it's like, and now we're going into the next two-thirds of this film. Well, because even episode five has a similar thing with Hoth, where it's like, okay, they're escaping from Hoth, there's a battle, all that kind of stuff. But that but, continues to flow like on. You said, like you that it, it, the it results completely leads to them. On. Yeah to the the Millennium Falcon being hunted and to Luke going off to his training. Like it still totally continues. Yeah. But like this one, as you said, it's self contained. It just it it ends that chapter of Han's life and Luke's life and stuff that's over. Yeah. Tatooine is done until It's done. We went back in the prequels. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. And yeah, no, it was and, just uh it, it Again it was a great way to like set everything up to bring it full circle. For so like these characters, right, and and to see their evolution, to see their changes over the course of these films, and uh, and it's just it's a lot of fun. Minus Jedi Rock is terrible, but like everything about Jabba's Palace, that whole sequence, I just I eat it up, I eat it, up. and the green lightsaber, man, love it. Oh, the green lightsaber, love it. 
and that was one of the things that pissed me off about the new ones too. They did not have enough. There's like no green lightsabers. It's like it was just all blue and red. But and it was all the same damn blue lightsaber. It was like the lightsaber. It's like honestly, it's like you, you guys can make more. I've never seen anyone have such a hard on for a lightsaber. Like for real, for real. Like that lightsaber just they broke it, and they're like, we'll just glue that shit back together. It's like. They didn't even glue it. They just taped it. (laughs) Like why leather? Just fucking make a new one. Unbelievable. Does no one know how to weld these these films? These films. Anyway, no, I love the green lightsaber too. And getting to see that, obviously, it was just another piece of imagery that was uh, credit to Luke's journey. Out, man. So we never saw anything like that. That was the first time we saw a green. Yeah, it was. It was the first time. Yeah. And then, then. Qui-Gon showing up in episode uh episode one, one. Yeah, with his green one. Just Everyone's like, like, like ah, yes. more green cool. Yes. We love it. We love it. Anyway. No, that first third is excellent. And uh yeah. Very soon we'll be uh continuing into the you know, the next two thirds there. So So yeah, no, it was just it's an excellent sequence. They do so many things right and they just set you up. For the whole rest of the film, and you know it's going to be freaking awesome, which it is, the next two-thirds. But we'll talk about that next week, uh, when we uh, continue our discussion about Star Wars Episode Six. But for now, we're going to take a quick break and just head over to the question of the day this week, brought to us by Ethan. What do you got for us, buddy? That's a good question, Matt. That's a good question of the day, actually. <laughs> Here's today's question of the day. What, what do I have the question for... question of the day? What do I have for the question of the day? Well, Matt, let me tell you. Um, you know what? We're at the end of the trilogy. I gotta ask. Who is your favorite character um, for the entirety of the original trilogy? So for four, five, and Just six. In this, for four, five, and six, who is your favorite character and why? <laughs> oh, man, that's such a damn good question because, like, what... I- immediately like instinctively i want to say luke skywalker like right young hero goes off on the journey becomes a jedi like he becomes a master a knight at the end get the green lightsaber just real damn cool in the all black like just slick as hell love it love his character arc love his journey and obviously mark hamill himself is a gem so of a good. human being even today just beautiful beautiful man um but then also my other side instantly kicks in and is like, oh, but Darth Vader. Ooh, but Han Solo. Ooh, Chewbacca. Ooh, the Emperor. Ooh, like, you just think of all the characters. Uh, and Leia? You're like, yeah, uh, I was going to say Leia. Yeah. I was just saying, yeah, like, sure. you just think of all the characters and you're like, oh, man, but they're all so good. Um, I think overall, like, if you consider the whole trilogy, again, I would stick with Luke. And I think that's a pretty, like, it's a safe answer um, because it's just, it's the truth. Like, I just, you know, you want to be the Jedi. It's, it's that young, you know, adventure, that hero's journey that he goes on and goes from just this farm boy. He's like, eh, but I just want to go to Tashi station and get some power converters, you know, to like, <laughs> I'm a Jedi, like my father before me, like just, it's just such a complete transformation. And that's really what tracks me to that character. Like, and he's just, a genuine person trying to do good, trying to find his way in the galaxy. And even when he finds out his father's Darth Vader, he's not like F that guy. Like, even though he wasn't there his whole life, like it wasn't like F that guy. He's like, I'm going to save my dad. You know, I'm going to even put my life at risk. I'm going to even, you know, to save and try and help him. Um, And that's a really admirable trait. Like he's just a real down to earth, human character and i love him it's great and again like i said mark hamill's just a freaking gem second would be i think the emperor man i really really like the emperor again he was only in the last movie for a little bit but he's impactful he's impactful what about you buddy right about you i feel like i feel like mine's a cheat ethan i feel like mine's a cheat because like because like obviously like like if I had to, it's tricky as I said it's trick as you said it's tricky because I love Chewie. Well, they're all re- Chewie like, and they're all really great characters. Like there's no Chewie's like, great. Yeah. So and, good. Uh, oh, and the and, droids, uh, man! Come on, you got to give some love to the droids. Well, so that's the thing. 
So also Yoda. I I do love Yoda in four yes. and five. Five but and six. Honestly, I my favorite characters through all four, all three movies are are R two D two and C three PO. Their chemistry is hilarious. This is the best written. They You're are. so right. They yeah. actually serve purposes through. They actually have a, <laughs> they have a reason they're the there. Movies. <laughs> yeah. There's growth with them. Yeah. Like them in the prequels are kind of pointless, and them in the sequels are absolutely pointless. Oh. But BB eight was a great addition. I loved BB eight. But R2 and 3PO just in these three movies. But like, but in the original trilogy, like we start off with them and they're fantastic. Even when they're separate, they're hilarious. They're, they're especially in episode five when they're separated the entire time. And like C3PO is having to like deal with all these people who don't take him seriously for good reason. (laughs) And then R2 is just like, I'm on a swamp planet and I'm not built for this. What is going on? But then all the stuff they deal with in episode th- like three PO's God arc in the second part where they the Ewoks like he's a god. I love that because he's just like, I'm just being polite. And they're like, no, three PO, use this. And he's like, I can't do that. That's so dumb. Yeah. But like, no, man, like I love those I love those and droids. They, and like, and they treat them like characters, like you said. They give them purpose, yeah. they give them character arcs, they give them these little journeys and experiences. And in the prequels and the sequels, they're just there as tools. Or like, look the droids, but like no hey actual. Guys, purpose. You remember these? 100%. R 2s like, like you just get to hang out with Anakin and Padme. Like, that's your, that's your job, dude. Cool, just hang out there, be cool. Don't do anything interesting. Three but... PO's even more like he's like the most pointless after the trilogy. It's like, bro, like why are you even here? <laughs> like, well, the whole the whole like asking Han if he recognized him with his red arm was weird that was just a weird moment i'm like this like the way i've explained it to people is like in the prequels they write r2d2 and 3po like they're children like they don't understand what's going on then in the trilogy that's when they're they're like the prime of their life and they yeah they act like people they act like people but then in the the sequel trilogy they're like treated like old confused men who senior don't know citizens what they're doing <laughs> and it's like okay i guess that's a weird choice but like i get it i guess that technically but like makes sense but if they're droids you would think they would be the most consistent characters, well they should right? be yeah they're machines right yeah yeah that's actually really funny i love that comparison actually the whole red arm thing i think came from like a book or like a prequel comic book or something that was all about that focused like, around three PO and his and told the story of his red arm. But then it's like, but then you throw it in the film just so you can sell the book. Like he's like, look at my red arm. And then like later in the movie, it's back you to gold. Didn't recognize like, me it's with it. Back to gold by the end of the film. Like, okay. like nothing has happened, Thanks, guys. It's like oh, we blew up Star Killer base, and my arm is gold now. It's like, but why? Like it okay, was such. I that's guess. that's like a huge critique point that i have against episode seven like and not because it's really significant but it's just so sloppy and like so corporate you know what i mean like just to sell a book or something like get out of here with that bullshit get out of here i hate that stuff anyway (sighs) yeah that's that's my pick awesome man that was a great question i hope i can think of a good equally good question for next week's episode where we'll be back you have a next week next week so we'll be back for uh, our continuing discussion on episode six. If you enjoyed it so far, remember to uh, subscri- subscribe if you're on YouTube. We never actually say that, but if you're on YouTube, like subscribe. We got we talk about tons of film topics and we just we love talking about film. Hope you guys enjoyed listening and uh, participating as well. Let us know who your favorite character is out of the Star Wars original trilogy. Let us know what you think about the opening scenes of Star Wars Episode 6 and what you think about any of the topics we've been talking about. I'm sure you have Let us know how much you love Jedi Rocks. Oh my god, if you love Jedi Rocks, just stop. Just... No, Matt, we need No, you stop. Get the hell out of here. Get out of here. (laughs) But but if you're... Join the Jedi Rocks army. Still with us, you know, let us know your opinions. It just... um, It's awesome. That's awesome. Anyway... Uh, Ethan, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me at Instagram at Ethan R. Hill. You can find me on YouTube at Ethan R. Hill. And you can find mine and Prosser's feature film, Damned Rights, at realhouse.org. You can rent it, you can download it, you can buy it. Uh, give us some love, and we would be much appreciated. 
Matt, where can they find you? Cool, man. You can find me over on YouTube at Storytellers for Life. There, it's all about helping you uh, reignite your dreams, live your purpose, tell your stories. So we just really dig into storytelling. I got a great interview with an upcoming author on there. They want to check out, just put out a video tonight. It's about, you know, asking the question, does our inner dialogue actually affect our lives? Like the things we say to ourselves, the stories we tell ourselves, does it affect our life? And if so, how? So just, you know, kind of an interesting topic to talk about for sure. So yeah, come on by Storytellers for Life. Jump on over there and just check out what we got going on. And uh, that's pretty much the only place that's important where you can find me. Everywhere else, you probably can't find me. I just spy on other people. That's what I use Twitter for. Then I get mad at the human race, and I'm like, I gotta get off social media. This is terrible. So, come to my YouTube channel. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Anyway, um, that's it for this episode of A Feast of Films. We will be back again, like I said, next week, continuing our discussion of Star Wars Episode Six, the best Star Wars movie ever made, and probably, honestly, will ever be made. Let's be honest about that. Let's be honest about that. I agree. Right now. Until next week, we will see you guys later. Bye-bye. So long. Toodaloo. And may the Force be with you. you.